Oh, <laughs> hi. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was, I was enjoying my uh, my book on my Kindle Fire and um, a little bit of coffee. You know, I'm, I'm I'm awful comfortable, and I guess this is a perfect time for you and I to talk about the fact that uh, uh, one of the reasons that people have a hard time and struggle going to faith gatherings is because they're just too comfortable. <laughs> I mean, nowadays. Not only can you stay home and not worry about uh, anybody uh, uh, judging you because half of us are staying home, but you also you can watch your own church service. And then if you're feeling really spiritual, you can go and find another person that you like even better, maybe an Andy Stanley or a Francis Chan or a, you know, pick your favorite poison here. Alistair Begg is one of my favorites because I could listen to that guy talk all day long in that Scottish accent. Um, but... Uh, one of the things that we really struggle with nowadays is that we're just too comfortable to go to a faith gathering. And I know how that is. I mean, even as a pastor, there are some days that I wake up and, and I just feel like don't not going to church that day. And, and, uh, and that's difficult. That's hard, um, especially when you're the one that's supposed to be preaching. But uh, let's be honest. Uh, if we all stay home and we are all just watching sermons and podcasts and uh even great uh curriculum uh for christian educators that to help us understand uh what it looks like to follow jesus there is something we're still missing if we are staying home and staying comfortable in our beds um, as a matter of fact um paul talks about that he's in in hebrews uh chapter 11 i believe it i believe it is paul some people uh would say that it is uh it's someone else, but I think Paul probably wrote this. Uh, it's actually in chapter 10. Um, he talks about how important it is to understand who Jesus is and that he is the, uh, uh, he's the one, he's our high priest. He's the one who takes care of everything. And he's talking to Jewish people who understand that the high priest really had a very important task. His job was to atone for the sins of the, uh, uh, of the uh, community so that they could have the blessing of God. And so he was in charge of all the sacrifices and all of the laws and all of the teaching, all of those things that would allow the people to understand, first of all, how they should act best. And then second of all, um, what would happen if they went against what God's law was. The um, Bible calls that sin. The um, best way for me to describe that is that it is breaking God's law, but why do we have God's law? Isn't it so that we learn how to love uh, love him, love others, and love ourselves the best way that we can. In other words, sin is when we do something that hurts someone else, hurts ourselves, and hurts the God who loves us. Uh, for instance, if I lie to someone, I hurt them because they go on and they act on a piece of information that's not true, and it may cause them to act in a different way than they would normally if they knew the truth, and that can hurt them. Uh, it also hurts me because typically it's been my experience that your lies find you out there. You can only hold up uh, for so long and eventually something happens. You forget what you said or um, somebody catches the truth from someone else and all of a sudden you, they know that you lied. And it, it hurts you because they now know that you have less integrity than they thought and they may not trust you as much. And then it hurts your relationship with God because you've hurt his kids. I mean, the, the big thing to God is that you honor and respect and glorify him, but also that you treat his kids with respect. And all of the people that, that God loves, and that includes you, uh, deserve to be treated well. And so when we sin, so to speak, when we hurt others and hurt ourselves and hurt our relationship with God, then uh, the truth is we are even less comfortable going to church. But uh, Paul says, Brothers, since we have a confidence to enter the holy places because of the blood of Jesus, he's the one who made the sacrifice for us. He's the one who made it so that when we do sin, when we do hurt others, when we do hurt ourselves, when we do hurt our relationship with God, Jesus pays the price for us and the consequences are his. And we can, if we recognize it, we admit that we've done it, and we tell God we're going to rethink how we're going to live our lives, we repent of it, uh, then the blood of Jesus covers us and he says, we have that confidence to enter into holy places because of what Jesus did for us by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain that is through his flesh. And since we have a great priest like Jesus over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. In other words, we, we can now be clean in our conscience. We can go ahead and, and 
and believe in the holiness that God gave us just because Jesus died for us and rose again. And we believe that. So he says in verse 23, Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering. For the one who promised us is faithful. And let us consider, now this is the part where he talks about how important it is, even though it's more comfortable to be at home, even if it's more comfortable to watch things online, even if you get a chance to do that in, in your pajamas and maybe drink a little coffee while you're doing it, there's something that you're missing whenever you don't show up in a, a faith gathering. He says, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful, and let us consider how to stir up one another to love and to good works. Uh, to love, that word love is the agape love, it's unconditional love. In other words, it's godly love that is hard for us to understand by ourselves. Uh, God understands it completely and he loves us that way. And he asks us to love others that way, but we have to learn how. And, and Paul is saying here, let's consider how when we get together, we stir each other up to love the way that God loves and to do good works. Now, I know it's very important to me, maybe important to you as well, uh, that uh, people in this world who have had uh, some, some trouble growing as they've grown up, um, uh, poor social conditions, poor economic conditions, poor relational con conditions, poor environment conditions, uh, I believe very strongly that we who have had uh, either have grown up in a different environment or have learned how to conquer those uh, deficits and disabilities, um, can show others, and we do good works. Um, some people call it social justice, but l let's be honest, it's not justice really. It, it's really an, an opportunity for us to help people to help themselves, um, to go uh, beyond what maybe their upbringing might allow them on their own. So we're gonna stir ourselves up to love people who even are the unlovely, and to do good works for those who need that extra leg up. And someday they're going to be that person who's sitting there. I, I tell people every once in a while, I grew up on government cheese. Um, we, you know, my mom and dad were divorced when I was very young. And, uh, you know, there were times when we needed help from the government to get through a, a week. Um, there were times even uh, when mom and dad were together we, where dad would be unemployed and we would just, we would struggle. And we were in that process. Um, and uh, so I, I didn't have to, we didn't have to take care, uh, advantage of the whole welfare process, but we did get help. And I remember uh, uh, one time, uh, one of my mom's uh, best friends rigged it so that we could win a car because the car that we had was breaking down and was, was falling apart. And she found a way to make that work for us. And, and we are eternally grateful for her to be able to do that for us. Um, but those kinds of things helped us get to where we were. My mom worked hard and I saw her do that. And I started realizing that I need to work hard as well. God came into my life and helped me to clean up some of the things that were in my environment so that I could be something greater than what I started out to be. And now I get an opportunity to help those other people who maybe are struggling a little bit, but they, they have all of the same abilities that I do as far as uh, being able to work hard to be responsible and do the, the great things that God has planned for them. So this says, let's, let's, let's hold, let's, let's do this. Let's consider how to stir up one another and love to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another all the more as we see the day drawing near. Now, those of us who are believers in the Bible know that God, uh, has, uh, warned us. It's not that he's ordained it so much as he has warned us that there's going to come a time when things are just getting worse and worse and worse and worse. And so people who are, um, are look into that kind of thing call it the end times. But the truth is, uh, God calls it the day of the Lord. It, it, the day of the Lord is coming when he's going to say, okay, that's enough. We're at a place now where I'm ready to draw all of those who believe in me to me. And uh, so as we get closer and closer to that day, it's going to be more and more important this isn't about, let's, let's make sure we're being good when God comes. This is about recognizing that the more encouraging we can be to each other, the more good works that we can do, and the more ways that we can love, the more people we can bring along with us. Enlarging the kingdom of God is about uh, reaching one more, teaching one more, helping one more grow in Christ. And, uh, and so we, we want to be a part of that. And that's what this is all about. So we could be really comfortable staying in our beds, and uh, doing the things that we like to do and uh, 
you know, maybe the coffee is keeping us up, but maybe, you know, the best thing for us is just a good night's sleep. So sometimes just going to sleep is the most comfortable thing you can do. <sighs> but I tell you, it's not comfortable, but it's important that we gather so we can encourage each other and love each other and we can do the good works that he's called us to do. Good night.